Hello, my friend. How are you? I hope you're having an outstanding day. This week's celebrity chat is with Regina Curtis, and we are talking about some pretty fabulous stuff, spiritual wellness, and how getting in touch with your soul wisdom can help you in all areas of your life. Have a listen, let me know what you think, and have an outstanding day. Talk to you soon. Hi, my friends. Welcome. This is the Back to Me podcast, and this is Heather, and I am super excited that you're here. You are going to hear some tips and some tricks and some ideas to help you live your happiest and healthiest self. I call it Back to Me because when you are taking care of yourself, Back to Me, then you can take better care of others, and we can all make the world a better place. This is Wellness Your Way, and I am super happy that you're here. Hello, my friend. I hope you're having an outstanding day. This is Heather again. I keep coming on. I can't believe it. This is the Back to Me podcast. I'm a big fan of commitment to consistency, which is just relating to the conversation Regina and I were having before this. <laughs> yes, but I know it's so funny. Um, and this is the Back to Me podcast, and it's a celebrity chat, which means I'm going to learn something new while you learn something new and today which is why i love this podcast and today i'm talking to is it's regina right yes because i'm always afraid i'm gonna hurt someone's name badly then it's gonna need cpr or something (laughs) no cpr needed (laughs) no cpr needed so and you're at i'm not even gonna try this at matri yes yes now i the question i love starting with is how the heck did you get here doing this what you're doing and in that you also get to tell us what you're doing yes (laughs) i love it perfect um i think that's a great place to start the conversation and um actually the name of my company is a great way to explain how i got here so um it's actually a made-up word that i used um two Sanskrit words and combine them together. So it's Atman, which means self or soul, and Maitri, which means um, benevolence or kindness. And so together I use them intending for them to mean kindness towards your soul or kindness towards yourself. And that is the journey that I've taken um, to get here and to be doing this work that I'm doing. It has been a journey of learning how to identify what my authentic ways of knowing and being are and then appreciate them and then trust them pretty much in that order (laughs) um yeah (laughs) yes i'm just making the yes face uh, because uh you can know them and then just go oh i don't want to be that i'm gonna go be this other thing and that never works (laughs) no it does not and i tried and failed at that game many, many times. Um, I ran screaming from my intuitive gifts for a long time because I didn't know how to use them. I didn't know how to allow them to be gifts. And when people would say to me, oh, this is such a gift that you have, I wanted to punch them in the face because it didn't feel like a gift. (laughs) It felt like a nightmare. (laughs) But she's all about nonviolence, right? I am all about nonviolence. <laughs> However, that was the reaction I had was just like, ah, oh, stop saying that to me because, um, yeah, I know that's probably not the best thing to say, but that's all you know, good. You know, sometimes it's, you have that reaction. It's real. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, this is so frustrating. And until you find the gift in it, you're no matter what anybody says to you, it do, it's just words. You know, they're just saying words to you and they may be actually infuriating you more than they are um, consoling you. So. Well, and the interesting thing in this, I don't know if you were finding this, like people will think it's the grass is greener. So, yeah. and it's, they don't understand what it is to be in any particular place. So I just, and this is a real kind of almost overly simple example. So I ran a yoga studio 
-hmm. I had my own yoga studio for 10 years and people would message me, oh, I really want to work for your yoga studio. I'm like, you don't actually know what that means. (laughs) You know, it's not all (laughs) unicorns dancing around in the corners and rainbows and blah, blah. It's like work. Well, and I think that's actually a really juicy conversation about, um, because the people that I work with are what I, I call soulpreneurs or soul guided entrepreneurs. So a lot of times those people, my ideal client is the person who, you know, worked in corporate for some time, had a creative practice, a spiritual practice, a, um, some kind of, I don't know, some kind of something that they did, whether it was meditation or um, yoga or whatever. A lot of times they'll say, you know, this was the thing that fed me. This is the thing that fed my soul or nourished my soul while I was in this in this role that wasn't feeding me. And so I leaned into that and I made that my business. I followed my purpose, empowered my passion, and here I am. And then it's like, oh, but now this is a business. And so a lot of those things that were not nourishing you, that were draining your energy, that were, you know, not really feeling an alignment for you from your corporate world. And I'm not, I'm not a corporate hater. Um, Sometimes people ask me, they're like, oh, do you think no one should work? I'm like, no, not at all. I just think there are a lot of really, um, there's a lot of work to do there, I'll just say, to simplify it. Um, So you leave that world and then you find yourself in it again. And it's like, okay, but now it's just me. And so there's a phrase I use all the time that, you know, you became an entrepreneur because for yourself, but you don't have to do it necessarily by yourself. And it can feel that way. (laughs) Especially in the beginning, right? Yeah. So I am that person. So I did yoga five days a week to compensate for my corporate stress. And there are people who who operate really well in that environment and who are so happy there and God love them because we need them, (laughs) right? There's a place for everybody. There is. But if you're in the wrong place, you can tell. Yes. And when you do exit, and because I also um, do the the business coaching, um, I do the health and wellness professional business coaching, the the aspect of health and wellness professionals, because I went into the wellness space and I could just see that they didn't recognize they had a business. They didn't know how to be in business. And all it is is a a new kind of struggle if you can't figure out how to how to be in that place. And in the beginning, you are alone, right? You are the doing, doing, doing everything. The marketing department, the finance department, the customer service department. All of it. <laughs> it is all you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but you shouldn't stay there ever. No. Yeah. Right? And it's not because it's not because those things are beneath you or that they are um hmm, I don't know like what the word is I want to use for it, but it's it's really because They're not menial. I mean Not at all. It's not all at important all. things. However, if they are, okay, this is the distinguish, this is the distinguishing factor for me. It's what are the things that are draining your energy? And so when you go into that place where you're building your business and you are wearing all those hats, you're doing all of those jobs, it's really important to find the things that are your energy, I call them your energy gains and your energy drains and your energy gains that give you life, that that energize you. And those are oftentimes whatever that core thing is for you. Maybe it was yoga, you know, the teaching of yoga, the being in the space, even just like having this environment around you and being in that space. Maybe it's the community. And, you know, I'm just kind of riffing here. But um, the things like bookkeeping or finding customers to come in or the marketing or, you know, that kind of some maintenance of the space, those could be really draining for you. And so it's finding the people as quickly as possible to fill those roles so that you're not having leaking your energy all over the place. And you can really still balance out that energy that you were looking for in the first place. Right. And it's, I mean, you went, entrepreneurs go into business for themselves 
to because they're drawn to something like they're drawn to it like I'm good at X so like I now I've actually now been teaching yoga for 19 years boom mind blown and yeah. like I just wanted to teach yoga and then you open a studio you're like someone has to clean the toilets right what? <laughs> <laughs> don't they just magically clean themselves right but <laughs> since service a part of this <laughs> I know right but I think what a lot of people and and I I, mean, I know we're talking mostly to entrepreneurs right now, but um, I've said it before, like, don't do it by yourself. No. And no. if you, and don't be an employee of your business like you are the owner of the business. And if you're doing tasks that and this goes a little practical, I know it's less um on the woo side, because it's my accountant brain now talking is it, it's all part of it, though, right? Yeah, um, your most of your tasks need to be the kind that generate revenue. Yeah, that was a hard one for me and still sometimes is because I have so a good friend of mine, actually, she put it so beautifully one time and she said, you can't be the both the how person and the why person in your business. And I was really good at being the how person for someone else. So not being the how person in my own business, because I have to be the why person. I am the why. Like, yeah, that's it. You know, I am the why, period. And so that is the role that I need to play. And so I need to have people help me with the how. And I'm really good at the how. I'm really, really good at the how especially for other people. Totally not great at it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a skill to learn. It is. I mean, I can do it. However, it is an energy drain for me because when I'm in that space of the why and the, you know, like I have this, I am a very creative person. And so I'm constantly bringing in ideas and, um, you know, energizing those ideas and talking about those ideas and finding the people that, you know, connecting with the people that bring them to life. And that's where I need to be spending my energy. And so once I go into that, like I switch into that mode of how it's a very different energy and I can do it, but I can't do them both at the same time. And so that's why it's so hard for me to be in that how space. And yet I still resist against it because it's like, I think it's that mentality of like, well, I know how to do this, so I should just do it myself. Right. No, no you shouldn't. <laughs> and this came to me just like randomly that we're making it sound like everybody needs to be a solopreneur. No. <laughs> and, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not. It's not everyone's cup of tea. It's not everyone's calling. And every entrepreneur needs people who can help them right yeah. so if your superpower is helping someone else and like achieve their vision then you you are a highly skilled highly sought after individual right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> because uh i mean when i worked in corporate i was joking with the a woman who does Clifton Strengths, and it's like, yes, I hired people. I thought I was hiring people smarter than me, but really, what I was doing was hiring people whose skill set was opposite mine, because then I didn't have to worry about those things. Yeah, exactly. Right? And I think that's um, that is one of the biggest mistakes that I see with entrepreneurs is hiring the people that you like and want to work with because they're like you, you know. And there's this whole. Um, there's a big draw in that I've seen with entrepreneurs of like, I just want to hang out with like-minded people, with like-hearted people, with, you know, people who are doing similar things. Cool. Make that your community of peers. Don't hire those people to work in your business because what you need is the people who want to do the things you don't want to do, who think yeah. differently than you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can hear people now going, how is this helping my spiritual wellness? So. <laughs> we got into this but i mean it was my accountant brain suddenly turned on yeah yeah Damn. um <laughs> i have yes, two you're... i can flip flop so easily <laughs> it's all a part of it though i think 
So let me bring it back into the spiritual realm for us. There's a, um, a concept from Reiki. So I'm a trained Reiki master teacher. And um, in my own training, one of the things that I encountered, and I encountered it pretty far down the road, um, is this concept of form and no form. And it, when it, when it came to me, as soon as I started to like really kind of unpack this concept, I was like, this is everything in the world. This is like, this is my like base, what I operate from. And it's very similar to what we've been talking about. So in any situation, in any energetic relationship, we'll call it, there's form and no form. And so in a business, you have structure and flow. And in your body, even if you think about it, you have structure, you have bones, and then you have, you know, flow, you have blood that's moving through, you have air that's moving in and out, you have concepts and ideas that are, you know, moving and changing and transforming. And when you recognize and honor that both are important, and both are necessary in whatever you're doing, in a way of being in a way of knowing that is essential, then you can really kind of allow both of those to have their space. And that's going to really support you in doing whatever it is that you're doing. I like it. I Thanks. like it. And it's interesting, like I can see it play out in so many ways of where if you have the form in place, then it's easier to flow. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I think about this, I, I think about this podcast itself. Like when I talk to people about coming on the podcast, I say, this is what's going to happen. Boom, 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 boom. And yes. <laughs> so many people say, wow, you've just got it all figured out. I'm like, yes, because then I can just come to the podcast and have a conversation. And have the conversation. Yeah. And, right? how, and it, as a person who has come into this space, to me, it's it's great because I know exactly what I'm in for and I don't have to think about it either. I don't have to worry, how much time are we going to have? Um, where do I log in to do this? When is it going to air? All of those things because I already know those things. You've created that structure for me. You've given me the form. And then you and I can just flow in the conversation and let it be whatever it is. So... I use the image of a tomato cage to describe this. Do you know okay. what a tomato cage is? That's the so, thing that you put around the tomato plant so it can grow straight? Exactly. Ish. It Ish. never really grows yeah. straight. <laughs> so um, it is the form for the organic no form of the tomato plant. And what it does is it creates scaffolding for growth so that the tomato plant can thrive, so that it can hold the weight of the fruit that are growing in there. So it's, um, if you've never seen one, it's four posts or three posts vertically, and then, and they're wire, they're not really posts, but like these wire kind of vertical posts that come up. And then there are circles that encompass, encompany that encompass encompass them and circle and, and circle yes and circle that's a good word <laughs> and so what happens is as the tomato plant grows up the leaves can start to grow out there's plenty of opening and room for it to grow out through these openings and as the tomato fruit starts to grow and ripen and get really heavy it can hold the weight of that branch and so it's supporting it and so I use this image actually for my own business of, you know, I have these these different pillars that I work with in the business and then I have programs and those are the circles. And what we do together, how we work together is very intuitive. And so there are the form, the, the things that are really the structure, and then there's the no form. And that's really the, the part where we get to play together and create together and explore. That's a cool visual. Thank you. I was trying to figure out how you were going to tie that into business, but I just thought as it, as it got bigger and made more money, it needed more support to make sure everything still worked. <laughs> well, let's say yes, that too. That works too. That works yeah, too. that works for me. It all works. And it is true. I mean, um, I heard the phrase recently about your brain is a uh, factory, not a warehouse. 
Yeah. So having, yeah. and it's not even just business, life. Yeah. <laughs> having, having things in place so you don't have to worry about them. Like, um, I can't remember the very first organizational course I ever took. I was in like my 20s. was like, they talked about cycling thoughts, take them out of mm-hmm. your head and put them on the paper because they're taking up yeah. too much brain space. Yeah. So anything that doesn't need to be in your brain, take it out and put it somewhere and l- let it let your brain do what it's supposed to do factory factory doing stuff churning out ideas and churning yeah. out fabulousness and do you find that do you uh you work mostly with entrepreneurs right i do mm-hmm. are there any instances where you find people just want some help of just like i can't figure out what i'm supposed to do <laughs> that's like all the time yes <laughs> <laughs> Um, so here's the thing about entrepreneurship is you are constantly, your business is an expression of you. And so you are always in the past, present and future of your business at all times. It is an ever evolving being just as you are. And when you are, you know, in that place, you're, you are like the, what do you call that? The the center point of the wheel or whatever, like where those, the, the hub, are we can call it the a hub. hub. Thank you. Um, I'm struggling with words today. Thank you for your help. <laughs> um, I'm all good. <laughs> so anyway, you are the hub. You are that, that center, um, point where all of the information is coming out of, but also going into and moving through. And so you have at all points, this perspective of, where you came from, where you are, and where you're going. And it can make it really confusing and a little bit disheartening at times because you're always going somewhere. You're always growing. And it can be easy to forget just how far you've come and where you are in the present moment because the things that you are doing, you might have, I I ran a, um, I have an entrepreneurial um, community a community for entrepreneurs. And I do these events about every two weeks and I bring everyone together. And the other day we did one and I said, okay, think about what's a goal that you've had in the past. It was this burning desire. You couldn't wait for it to happen. And it is an actual reality in your world right now. And this goes for whether you're in business or not. Think about something that, you know, it was just what you really wanted. And now it's just a part of your every day. And do you celebrate that every day? Do you look at that and go like, yeah, I did that. I checked that off. I'm so excited about it. Look at this, giving it gratitude every day. Or do you, you know, as soon as it's done, it just checks off and you're on to the next thing. And if that's the place you're living from, then you're never going to feel satisfied. You're never going to be in celebration or feel like you've accomplished anything because you're always looking forward to this has to get done. This, I want this to get done, you know? And so really being able to celebrate those things as well and give those space is going to help you to be in that space. So yeah, people come to me all the time and they're like, I just don't know what I want to do. And as soon as we start talking, they know exactly what they want to do. They just feel like they don't have that grounding because it's ever changing. Right. And I mean, we, as humans, we're going to keep that forward everything's like changing but there is that pause like you do have to have the pause to acknowledge that you did achieve something that you wanted to do or else it's true you like you'll just think you've never done anything exactly (laughs) right (laughs) yes and I was thinking about this when you were talking because a year October a year and a half ago I had a stroke and when I was in the hospital I just had this goal that I was going to paddle a kayak race for 110 kilometers. And you're in the U.S., right? I'm in the U.S., yeah. So I don't know what that is in miles. It's like 68 miles or something like that. It's long. (laughs) It's long. Yeah. And um, so I, yeah, I had this goal to paddle kayak 110 kilometers. And smart me, I took a friend whose skills offset or different than mine because I needed her I needed her skills and and I did it and 
<laughs> it, it took me 19 hours straight wow. of paddling and I went home and went to bed and got up the next day and like, okay. Now what? Was, now what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's, that's the thing. It's like, oh, and that's a really great example too, because, um, so there's a wave of motivation that we have, and this is what people often, this is the like slippery slope we get into when it comes to, you know, weight loss and exercise and any kind of like setting new habits or anything like that, where you will often set a goal either at the highest or the lowest point of your motivation. And so, you know, being in hospital, being in that place where you're like, I am motivated to yeah. get out. I am getting the hell out of what's here. What's happening? <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like you you have that point where you're like, okay, I'm motivated to do this. And, um, but the reality is that energy moves in waves. Energy is a frequency and it moves in waves. And so does motivation. And so does excitement, you know, all of those things. And so we'll set these goals when we're up here, like in this high point where it's like, I am motivated. I'm going to do this. I'm absolutely I have the energy. I have the excitement. I'm going to do it. And then it drops. And then you're like, well, I'm a failure. I can't do it. I can't even one day and I can't even get this done. Or you'll be able to kind of maintain it for a little bit and then it will start to drop off. And as soon as you do, it just, you're you know, we have this self-sabotaging cycle that we'll get into. And so I work with people in setting what I call ridiculously small goals. <laughs> <laughs> the goal that you can accomplish at your lowest point. And it's not because I'm saying lower the bar. You can't do that. You're not going to be able to accomplish that. Set that goal high, yes. But set your your reality meter really low because when you do that, um, so for instance, you know, devotional practice is a big thing for me. And that, that just means like a practice that you're showing up in regularly, not daily. I don't use the word daily because if you say daily, if you miss it one day, you've set yourself up for failure. And so if you are doing a practice that you're devoted to, whether it's meditation, some kind of creative practice, whatever it is, and your commitment is, I'm going to be devoted to this. And the more that I do it, the more it gives back to me. That's a very different energy than I'm going to do this every single day, or I'm going to do this for two minutes and I'm going to build up to two hours. That's not realistic. It's not realistic to say that you're going to, at some point every day, do two hours of practice. No. It's not going to happen. Life happens. <laughs> Life's in life. There's a lot of things in life that are going to interfere with that. And it's funny because, I mean, I have been a regular meditator for for like 20 years. Yeah. And I started at 15 minutes and now I'm up to 20. <laughs> there you go. You know like, what? But you've been doing it for 20 years. And that's because you have set realistic goals for yourself. Now, do you sometimes meditate for longer? Yes. Right. Do you but, sometimes meditate for less time? Of course. And do you sometimes not meditate? I'm going to say almost never. Good. And Except that, for when I paddled 19 hours. I did miss well, that day. Although that, that was a meditation. Was a meditation. <laughs> that whole day was a meditation, really. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, I love that you said almost never. And that's because that's that feels really honest because, you know, you're setting this goal for yourself that has flexibility. It's the form and no form. The regularity of, I'm going to show up for this practice. I'm going to give myself a realistic framework to work within, and I'm going to be flexible. And because of that flexibility, you're able to meet the require the not requirement, but you're able to meet that form more regularly. And also recognizing that um, being, giving yourself the grace to adjust and as things change, then you don't have to just beat yourself up, right? Yes. I failed. Right. That's, that, there's the I failed, so I, um, I why even bother? Yes. The, I failed, why even bother? And so that's that self-sabotage that you get stuck in that just immediately, and then it's the feast or famine, you know? Oh, well, I'm never going to be able to do this, and you have this horrible self-talk we can be so mean to ourselves in that self-talk. And then you get to that point again where you're 
you start to build up your motivation again and you hit that point, you're like, this time I'm going to do it. Damn it. And then what happens? Yeah. Crash. So. And I mean, we talk about circadian rhythms sometimes, like everything in your body has cycles up and down, like awake, asleep, energy, everything goes up and down. So why do you have to be 100% all the time for as something, a thing, yeah. a, an idea, an ideal? I mean, I don't know why this jo just jumped into my head that Hollywood is a very bad example because everybody on there is always epic. Even if they haven't <laughs> slept in 48 hours, right? they're yeah. going to jump out of the plane and shoot all the bad guys and fall on the ground and all of their bones should be broken, but they jump up. But like, not. For that's some not bones. real. No, no, it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's true. You know, again, I'm not, um, you know, I watch TV, I watch movies. Not. Oh, I totally watch movies. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not watching it 24 hours a day, but yeah, I do. And, um, and I think that that's the thing is like these extremes, these polarities that we've gotten into believing that like, oh, you can't be spiritual and watch Marvel movies. Why not? They're free. You know, <laughs> I watch cozy murders. <laughs> sure, exactly. Like there's something, yeah, there's something in there and um, you can be more than one thing at the same time and in fact you are always more than one thing at the same time and you are different like even if you have you know you're t you tend towards you know one side of a polarity of a spectrum um there are going to be moments when you're over here there are going to be moments when you're somewhere in the middle and that's what it is to be alive so look we just saw it at the beginning my accountant brain versus yeah. my yogi brain yeah they exactly. both live in there Sometimes yeah. one's louder than the other, right? Exactly. Oh, and I it like is that. true. You are, I did a, an episode a long time ago about, you know, how many people you are and mm. who you think you are. Every person who you interact with has a different view of who you are. And yeah. that's kind of okay. Like, it is, absolutely. And it's why I really love astrology and mm -hmm. other different modalities for introspection. Um, I joke around that if there was a PhD in introspective modalities, I would have three of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cause I just love it. I'm a total nerd for introspection and just different ways of looking at things. And um, so I have this, um, this method that I talk about, which is soul wisdom. And similar to any of those modalities, there are different archetypes within that or different, I like to call them more like ingredients to a recipe. And when you have a conversation with someone or you are engaging in a particular activity or with a different community, they're seeing you through the lens of their own self, their own soul wisdom, their own life experiences, their own, you know, archetypes. And they're seeing you, they're seeing whatever version of you is coming forth at that point, right? Whatever voice is speaking louder at that point or whatever skills you need to use at that point. So, you know, I can, um, it's one of the things that I actually, it's one of my biggest frustrations and also one of my greatest, um, joys in the work that I do is I actually am a, a channel. And if you look at, so human design is one of the, the lenses that I, I love human design. It's so I know. Cool. I was going to ask you if you did, did human design as well. I do. Yeah. And I use it as a oh, perfect. I love that. Um, so I'm a two, four generator for anyone that that means anything to. And I have an open throat and will center. And so everything else is defined. And so I'm a channel and I channel, I can help you channel what your purpose is. Um, and that's really what my like specific design is about. So when I work with someone, I speak in a language that works for them. And so I have had conversations where I use metaphors about carpentry and I have had ones where I've used metaphors around, um, you know, like really go deep into science and other times I'm like really talking business. And then another time I'm, you know, way into the woo world and, <laughs> and every conversation is different and that's what comes through. And I think that's part of the reason why 
I have had so many life experiences because it gives me the vocabulary to be able to have these conversations and make sense. And I mean, one of the biggest things when we're coaching people is we making it make sense for them, right? Like finding a way that they can see the potential or they can see what they need or their next step and being able to put, like you said, like carpentry or science or business, like putting it in a way they can understand. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. And And so I'm a two, four projector. I didn't know you were a two, four. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. I love it. (laughs) Very cool. And I tend to attract a lot of projectors into my life for whatever reason. Um, We like to hang together. Yeah. (laughs) There we go. Right. But yeah. So, um, but what I was thinking is just, you know, like it's that you have, you speak the language of whoever that person is, but when I do it, I do it naturally. It's not, um, I don't ask, you know, because people will say, well, what do you need to know before we work together? I don't need to know anything. I just need you to show up and I can tap in and start just speaking. I tap into, you know, energetically. And when we're working together in the business sense, I do ask you, what is your intention for how we're going to work together, which put, you know, gives us the direction. But I'm not going to ask you, would you like me to speak through the lens of religion or carpentry today? Would you like right. me to <laughs> It's just, I let it, I just be, get present and let it flow through me. And um, it's one of the things that people tell me all the time. And they're like, how did you know that I would, you know, this, 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 and, and, you know, whatever. And I'm like, I don't know. It's just, it's the images I saw. It's the feelings I felt. It's the names that came to me. It's, you know, and um, so that's why I say it's my greatest joy, but also one of my biggest frustrations because it's hard to explain um, other than, try it. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. It's like, yeah, I can't explain to you what broccoli tastes like, but you just got to try it. Yeah, exactly. And I, I'm saying I like broccoli, so. <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I like that example. That's so is fun. your, so because I know you have a quiz on your website. Is that I quiz do. take them to their, what did you call it? Soul? Soul wisdom language. Soul yeah. wisdom language. So if we have a, a couple minutes, I can talk about what soul yeah. wisdom language is. Okay. Um, so it is your unique recipe of how you receive, express, process, and integrate information. And there are five wisdom channels that every person receives information to and through them. They are thinking, images, movement, sensory, and emotions. So when you receive information, you may receive it through, um, through your emotions. You may receive it as images. You may receive it as words. Um, and same thing when you express, maybe you can see, if you can see on the video right now, I am very expressive with my movement and that's just a way that I express information. I also am very artistic and I will express through images or, um, through a spoken version of images. I'll use a lot of metaphors. I'll use a lot of examples of things that you can, you know, almost like see or feel or touch in your mind's eye. And so every person has a combination of these five different channels that they're receiving information through and that they are um, expressing through at all times. However, there are ones that we are more fluent in and ones that are more of our go-to. Sometimes those are ones that we've practiced more because of necessity. So for instance, a lot of people come back with um, results saying that their top channel or their most fluent channel is the thinking channel. And that's because we are using our thinking channel almost all the time. If we're in business, at work, in our education systems, in our relationships, you know, a lot of our systems are sleeping. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And to be honest, we're using all of them all the time. However, that's the one that we tend to be more attuned to because we need to use it for our communication process. Um, 
So, but when you take the quiz, it's a, it's a really simple, fun and easy quiz. And so it's seven questions and you answer them. You just answer which one feels the most accurate for you. And at the end, you get a profile saying, this is your most fluent channel that you're working with right now. Um, and then you can download, there's a PDF where I take you through a different devotional practice for each of those channels to help you attune um, and really get you know more fluent in each one of them, if that's something that you're interested in. That's super cool. Thank and you. I said it in a different, um, in, I think it was in the Clifton Strengths. I was like, who doesn't love a quiz? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Who doesn't love a quiz? It's who funny doesn't love a quiz? For a while, I had people asking me to make a quiz. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to make a quiz. Like, because I was thinking it was going to have to be this, like, really long, in-depth thing, like the Myers-Briggs test or, you know, something like that. And then I was like, no, it doesn't have to be. And it's not, it's not necessarily a um there's a science to it but it's not meant to be like a label a, a persona that you put on and wear and that's the only thing you ever wear because like i said this is something that's ever evolving with you it's a it's a language and just like a language you can become more fluent you can learn different ways of using words and different ways of um, expressing yourself. And so it's really meant to just be fun and informative at the same time. Awesome. Yes. So for sure, I know because I'm going to do it because I'm the boss. <laughs> it's in the show notes. The quiz is in the show notes and everybody yes. can go take it. And I'm a quiz junkie. So you okay. know that I'm going to go take the quiz because that's what I do. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm, I like learning things and I like finding out things. And yeah. the more layers, I mean, human design, first of all, super complicated. Oh my gosh. Take yeah. a lifetime to unravel that one, but still <laughs> fascinating every time you read it. And like uh, everything that you learn about yourself, you ju it just helps you get a better focus on. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it is like a, um, there's something that's really beautiful about any of these, these things, whether it's human design or astrology or, you know, any of these archetypes that we can learn from is that it's kind of like a costume, you know, that you can wear for a minute and you put it on. And like I was saying earlier, when you, whenever somebody's having a conversation, you're looking at it through one particular lens or one particular angle. And uh, the way that I describe this often is it's like looking into a disco ball. <laughs> you know what that is? Hopefully you do. Um, oh, my God. Of course I do. <laughs> I've been to a disco. Well, I mean, the, the listeners. <laughs> But yeah, a disco ball, you know, it's a mirrored ball with all these different um, kind of angles on it. And you and I, Heather, could be standing right next to each other and both looking at the disco ball. And what we see reflected back to us is something completely different. And you could move slightly this way or I could move slightly that way. And even still, we would be looking at something completely different again. And that's really what, um, you know, human design, astrology, Myers-Briggs, soul wisdom, all of the things, they really are helping you. It's like every one of these modalities, it's like one of those little mirrors on the ball and you get to just kind of like, oh, let me look at it from this angle. What can I learn here? Oh, let's, right. let's try that one. What can I learn here? That's super cool. Now I feel like I need to get out my 70s album. I know, right? <laughs> I have some, some music in my head. <laughs> Isn't disco back? Disco never dies. Disco never dies. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yes, I'm going to encourage everyone to, well, I'm going to have your website for sure and a yeah. link to the quiz to get over there and check your check your stats. And then um, before we head off, yeah. do you have final a final word of wisdom for everyone? Be yourself. Um, yeah, just, you know, figure out what that is and um, celebrate it. Embrace your weirdness and, you know, figure out how to make that your magic. There's no normal. There's no normal. There's no Absolutely. normal. No. That's brilliant. 
Thank, thank you. you so much for coming and spending some time with us. Thank you for having me. And for sharing your wisdom and your fabulousness. Super awesome. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. I've really enjoyed it. And my friends at In Podcast Land, go take a quiz. Quizzes are fun. Have an amazing day. Take care. Oh, yeah. And once you get your quiz result, tell me in the comments because I'm super curious who listens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> take care, my friends. See you Bye. soon. Hi, my friend. Thanks so much for listening to this entire podcast. If you found it useful and you're like me and you like, like helping others, please feel free to share this. Just give it a like. Give it a comment. If you found something useful in it, there's a chance that someone else will find something useful as well. Also, if you have any questions at all, I can absolutely help and I would love to help you can email me at heather at prosperityflowcoaching.com if you want more of this awesome content you can follow me on instagram heather stewart coaching you can follow me on facebook prosperity flow coaching and I have a personal request I want to help as many people as I can with these podcasts and if you could give me a review hopefully a good one <laughs> if you could share if you could send this out into the world I would truly appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day and I hope that you find your way to wellness by getting back to me. Take care, my friend. <laughs>